So, um, good morning. Thank you everyone for joining us today. We have Sherry Longacre with Telogen um, here to speak with us today. If you recall, Sherry is one of our um, long friends. Um, she was formerly with OFMQ and now she's moved over to Telogen and she is here to talk about um, Telogen Connect and talk about the new QIO and QIN contract. So Sherry, I will turn it over to you. Perfect, and um, thank you, Laura. Thank you so much for having me um, here today. I appreciate it. And um, before we get started, I just wanna let everyone know that, um, you know, that we're here to support you. And I know that you're going through um, such a difficult time right now and know that we are, we're here with you in that um, we're here to support you through this as well. So I will let you um, next, please, Laura. So. Um, as many of you know, we have some big news that um, Telogen is the new QIN QIO for the state of Oklahoma, and we are one of the largest, the QIN is one of the largest federal programs dedicated to improving health quality for Medicare beneficiaries. Um, this was awarded on November 8th of 2019 from CMS, and this will uh, award is for the next, now it's the next four and a half years. And it's for the, the QIN, QIO for the Colorado, Illinois, Iowa, and now Oklahoma as well. So we're excited. You may be a little more familiar with Telogen through the uh, Medicaid Tuner Care Program that has been in Oklahoma for the last over 14 years, I believe. So it has been, here established and working with our um, Oklahoma partners. You know, we are also wanting to collaborate with our stakeholders and identify the gaps so that we can be successful in our scope of work. So if there is anything that you need from us that we can provide, please let me know. You know, we would love to be able to support, uh, provide support, you know, in other areas as well. Next slide. Just to give a little bit of a, overview of the QIN QIO is the is one of the largest federal programs dedicated to improving health quality and by law the mission of the QIO program is to improve the effectiveness efficiency and economy and quality of services to get it delivered to our Medicare beneficiaries now these programs are all um, no cost because they are paid up front through the um, Paid up front, so no charge for that. Next slide. The Medicare uh, Quality Innovation QIN QIO organization is to, as I kind of talked about earlier, is to improve healthcare outcomes for everyone, especially our high risk Medicare beneficiaries, and to provide technical assistance and evidence based practices throughout. Also, aligning our healthcare quality improvement activities with our current based patient satisfaction matrix, reporting requirements, and value based purchasing fundamentals. So, we're trying to make sure that we are your go to resource for uh, quality improvement initiatives. Next slide. So, CMS has identified uh, five aims and three cross cutting focus areas that they want us to focus this work on. And so, uh, the, so we're going to focus our work around the, the three priorities will be to support the vulnerable populations and reduce healthcare disparities, to support rural communities, and increase person and family engagement. And then the five aims that they've identified that we will focus on will be on improving behavioral health outcomes and decreased opioid misuse, increased patient safety, increased chronic disease and self-management, increased quality of care transitions, and improved nursing home quality. Now we have um, had guidance that we will be shifting focus a little bit and we'll be receiving more uh, fo uh, guidance from CMS on how they're exactly wanting us to uh, you know, proceed. So we will be shifting focus just a little bit because of our COVID-19. And um, I'll make sure and keep everyone updated as soon as, you know, we find out exactly what those guidelines are. Next slide. 
So our technical assistance is designed to bring multi-sector organizations together with our patients, our residents, and families to utilize and implement evidence-based tools, measure progress, and recognize accomplishments amongst the five aims. And this is kind of bringing everyone together to our public health, our hospitals, our, our practices, patients and families. I mean, there is not anyone in the spectrum that doesn't fit somewhere. So we're trying to make sure that we are addressing everyone across the healthcare um, continuum. And if you can please share this information with your contacts, because Telegenus the QIO is new in the state of Oklahoma, just trying to make sure that we're getting the word out there and able to reach everyone is quite a task on, on its own. So if you can please share this information with others, I would greatly appreciate it. And then we can kind of link everyone together as, as we're moving forward. Next slide. We're going to move on to discuss more about the QI Connect because that's how we are going to be able to accomplish our goals. And then once you're able to join the QI Connect, you'll be able to ask, you can choose one or you can choose all of the affinity groups and offered a variety of learning collaboratives within each affinity group. So we're going to talk just a little more about that. Next slide. And then how will we accomplish that? Well, in our learning groups and learning collaboratives, providers and organizations can participate in an all-teach, all-learn environment that consists of virtual learning sessions that bring together multidisciplinary teams from different organizations to dialogue and exchange ideas about healthcare outcomes. So we will and as we talked about earlier, you'll be able to choose one or all any of the learning collaboratives that you would be interested in participating in. We, of course, will use data as a core component of QI strategy because without having our baseline data, you know, we, what's the point of QI, right? So, and then at the end, we're going to celebrate with an outcome sharing event and we'll sustain the game with a continued data tracking and reporting as well. Next slide. So this is a little peek at what the affinity groups and learning collaboratives look like. So we have the opioids and behavioral health, and then underneath that affinity group will be all the different learning collaboratives that you can choose from. So you can choose from if there is a speaker that you're interested in, or if there is a, a specific activity that you're interested in, and they will all be listed underneath this affinity group. And then, like I said, you can choose one or you can choose all of them, whichever one works best for you. Um, I'm kind of like to be a part of everything. So I, I kind of like to see what's going on in all the different um, areas. Now, we know that chronic disease prevention and self-management is a hot topic. Focusing on chronic kidney disease, diabetes, and, hyper and cardiac health. And also patient safety and care transitions is such a hot topic among um, all of our um, healthcare, across healthcare, because of trying to decrease our uh, rehospitalizations and also the care transitions between providers. Um, medication safety will come in that as well, making sure we're doing those um, med reconciliations. And then our nursing home quality. Uh, will include the five-star improvement, medication matters, continuing to work on those antipsychotic medications and our opioids, as well as our UTI and uh, decreasing our readmissions as well. It, all of these are data-driven, so we will be collecting and sharing data. It will be aggregated, so no one will uh, be able to see your specific data that you share. These are all open to all of our community partners and stakeholders. We're also meeting uh, beneficiaries in the community. If they're very active in the community, we're, you know, we're kind of meeting their point of view too to see um, what's working, what's not working with their care and letting them have a voice in um, care transitions as well. Next slide. Next slide. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because I know everyone has so much on their minds right now, but I wanted to just to kind of show you that 
opioid safety and behavioral health. These are some of the goals that um, we are looking for. And then next slide. Here is some, a little bit of information regarding the chronic disease prevention and self-management. And next slide. Care transition. Um, aligning with our healthcare provider uh, priorities and the, having the right people at the table at the right time. We know this is always um, such an issue, just having everyone, having everyone here. Okay, next slide. Our affinity group activities, the participants will be offered a variety of learning collaboratives. And this will be based upon the IHI's Breakthrough Series Model Learning Collaborative, which will be, um, is the core for the learning collaborative approach to learning and innovation in these four groups. And as you know, we will be incorporating the Plan Do Study Act as well. We'll also have learning and action events, the LAN events, peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning, and then also um, the Extension for Community Health Outcomes, the ECHO Model Series, which I know that several of you were um, familiar with, but if not, we can go into that just a little bit further. Next slide. So this is kind of showing you how the events work and how we can work together and um, attending the learning collaboratives and joining like-minded people to tackle common challenges because there's always strength in numbers when we're together and it's really appropriate for all of our settings. So this kind of shows you that you start with the pre-work and then go into, and that is kind of consisting of um, putting your teams together and um, learning who's going to be um, the leader for your group. And then starting with your learning session one, which you will um, start with your first learning session, and then you would go into your PDSA, which you are going and uh, disseminating that information, applying it to your uh, organization, and then coming back with your uh, learning calls so that we can uh, get together and see what's working, what's not working, and how we can assist make you successful as well. Um, always sharing um, innovations and challenges because I always feel like um, it's what's not working that is important in this model as well so that we can make sure that someone else doesn't go through that path down that path also. And we will use data as a core component of our QI strategies going through these learning sessions. Next slide. And then having additional learning opportunities, which we have several coming up and I'll share with those here in just a little bit, but um, the ECHO series is always curriculum and case-based requires active participation, sharing in the Zoom platform, and commit to act and share data as well. Um, we are an ECHO certified hub, so uh, we do, we have been certified, and these are curriculum and case-based virtual meetings utilizing the, the Zoom platform. The LAN events will be single events, bringing the subject matter experts to share with you. Um, and they could be um, just one or multiple calls with that uh, subject matter experts, but they, all of these events will be listed underneath the learning collaborative once that you have um, joined with Telogen QI Connect. Next slide. And this is our commitment to you, is that you can expect quality improvement expertise, subject matter expertise, technical assistance when you are needing that specific one-on-one, -on -one. data analysis to make it actionable. We do have our data analysts that can assist you with that. And then share uh, best practices and outcomes from the learning collaborative so that we can all be successful. Next slide. I think we kind of just went over this just a little bit about um, Benefits of joining with your QIO is to optimize your improvement efforts to achieve your goals, apply your evidence-based tools and interventions, 
having a lot of um, being able, which I think that everyone really enjoys, is being having peer to peer um, within your region and you know across the state to exchange ideas and solutions with your peers who have similar challenges and to coordinate the data analysis efforts to help evaluate how your organization or community actions are contributing to improved health outcomes. Next slide. So Telogen has a web portal, and this is where your secure data will be housed. So you will have a login and you'll have a password. It does uh, houses your secure resources that they can be used. This is where your data will be stored and no one else will be able to have access to this data. You know, only you. Um, it's avail available to the Telogen QI Connect partners, um, which you'll be able to access, of course, 24 hours a day. And then you'll have your, we also have a web portal user guide that you can have access to as well. Next slide. This literally takes about 30 minutes to join the Intelligent QI Connect, and you would go to the Intelligent QIN QIO um, website. It just asks basic information and um, which affinity groups that you are interested in participating in. And then, you know, and I know everyone is so busy right now, and if you want to shoot me an email and just tell me your, your name and your facility and which groups that you're interested in, I can do this for you as well. Next slide. And of course, I jumped ahead and I just told you that, that I would do it for you. So, um, so any, and if you have multiple team members that you're wanting to sign up, and um, you can send me their emails, their job titles, and I can do that for you as well. Next slide. I wanted to share just a little bit of kind of some of the uh, land events that we've been hosting. And one of them has been on COVID-19 prevention and preparedness and long-term care. We had a guest speaker, Dr. Gong, and he um, is kind of on the front lines and um, has been giving some value, valuable information for our folks. All of our events are um, interactive, so you're able to ask your questions to the subject matter experts, and that has been beneficial as well. So not only are you able to take away from each other, you're able to ask questions to the subject matter experts and get their answers. Next slide. We also have a guest speaker, Dr. Joseph Auslander, coming up this uh, Thursday, which will Laura will be sending out the in the invite so you guys can sign up as, and join us as well. And Dr. Auslander will be hearing us uh, talking about the ABCDs of the COVID-19 pandemic and ways to implement strategies that disrupt further spread of the virus. And he, uh, if you have possibly have heard from him about him, that he developed. Uh, co-developed the interact tools which many of us are so familiar with so um, it's an honor and I'm really excited about um, this event that's coming up next slide and I was telling Laura that this is hot off the press actually steaming off the press because we are starting to have uh, COVID-19 post-acute office hours which will be our next one will be on Wednesday April the 15th from 11 to 11.30, just trying to, I know that everyone is so busy and having so much information coming at one time. So these are going to be just bite-sized uh, information so that you can, don't have to commit a lot of time. You can join if you're available, we would love it and be able to um, hear what's going on in the state. These will be state specific. So you'll be able to hear what's going on in the state and, um, and join in with us as we go through all this together. Next slide. I also put together some resources because I heard that um, the telemedicine is something that we're all going to be utilizing. I know it's new, so I went ahead and put the links on here so you didn't have to search for anything. And just last week, Telogen had a great 
uh, webinar going over a lot of the coding and I will send that out as well because it was beneficial and uh, we had some subject matter experts on there sharing a lot of uh, common questions and information on the different coding for the telemedicine. So um, I will share that with you as well. I just had did not have that link yet. Um, next slide. So I know that I kind of went through a lot today about the Telogen QI Connect, and I also discussed that we will be and um, I will definitely keep you in um, what all we will be able to provide and to do as we go through all this, all the the COVID-19 and all the different changes and just support that we can do for our our hospitals and our communities as well as we you know as the saying is we are in it together and um so if and if you want to reach out to me please do i would love to hear um your specific needs and how that uh, we can support our state and if you have any questions please please reach out i'm here for you and i, I want to be here to support you Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Sherry.